Jujutsu Kaisen. This is Jujutsu Kaisen chapter 202, Blood and Oil. Um, all right, so last we left off was something completely different. Uh, last we left off, we learned a lot about what Kenjaku has been up to and the, uh, I guess, preparations that he's been making outside of Japan uh, for the Cullen game going forward. And it seems Kenjaku. that... It seems that he's like contacted various countries in order to uh, deploy their nation's troops into Japan uh, to kidnap Jujutsu sorcerers. Uh, I think it's basically a setup so that they could, uh, ex so that Kanjaku can like exacerbate the amount of cursed energy that is being uh, used uh, throughout the world. And I think this chapter explains a little deeper as to how he plans to do that, I suppose. Um, but this chapter opens up with com something completely different. Um, the very first page is a panel of uh, Riko Omanai, so, uh, who, if you remember, was uh, the star plasma vessel um, way back that was supposed to be uh, the next body for Tengen. Um, but she was uh, killed, unfortunately. <laughs> so they never got to do that. And Tengen, uh, according to this page where we start off, has not found a more uh, a, a, a new host with a potential like Rico's uh, outside of the person that Tengen is talking to, who is Yuki. Uh, Yuki Sukumono, I believe her name is. We've seen her a couple times throughout the series. Uh, I believe she was like a mentor to, to Megumi, if I remember. Uh, she has a very, like, I guess, uh, <laughs> like Shanks-esque presence where she's like, she pulls up every now and then and everybody's like, holy shit. It's Yuki Tsukumono. <laughs> so Yuki, Yuki, what are you doing here? Can't she control cursed spirits to sound like that too? Some, yeah, she, yeah, something like that. Um, but it turns out she's just having tea with Tengen, uh, who's basically they're talking about like why Tengen hasn't merged because there have been other star plus star plasma vessels, just nothing to the same level as uh, Rico. So you know. He's never taken up, and he's really just kind of, after she died, he's just kind of accepted the circumstances. Then <laughs> He's just like, I'm immortal, and merging with a star plasma resets my flesh. So, you know, it had stopped simple evolution that uh, that's achieved through aging. Uh, and, you know, if I evolve, I might destroy humanity. But uh, having <laughs> failed to merge, even if I evolved and extend my will outside my body, I can use a barrier technique to preserve my sanity. So, you know. Shit happens, I guess, is uh, Tengen's whole attitude behind that. Um, Yuki's not a big fan of that. Um, no. She, she's just like, man, was it reasonable for you to to, uh, to use children to work for you? And just say, it was okay. With a, it was okay without merging. Um, and he's like... Uh, and Yuki actually reveals that like she would have allied with the children of the star if, like, I guess the bad guys, if their plan was to seize control rather kill rather than kill star plasma vessels like her, I guess, because mm. Yuki counts as one. Um, Yuki can apparently hear the voices of the people who have merged with uh, Tengen. And she says that like, she like, she won't tell him what they're saying. And uh, I don't know. This is just like a weird, like philosophical debate as to why she's just like, if I tell you what becomes of the vessels who merge with you, you're, you'll use their wisdom to of your age to get defensive and act enlightened, right? And uh, Tengen's like, she's like, I won't make it easy for you. As a farmer, star plasma vessel, that's my responsibility. And uh, he's like, well, I was hoping we could talk a little more. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here, to be honest? We'll get... Right. Well, that was news. I didn't know that she was a former Starlight. Yeah, that's that's news. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, just to get through the chapter, we cut over. There's like this actually really cool panels of just, I guess, a barrier breaking down. And um, through that barrier, we see uh, fucking Kenjaku breaking through. And I believe this is like this is now present day, you know, during the culling games. Uh, that's happening and he's just like broken up through the barrier that's above the tombs of the star corridor and uh, the first thing Kenjaku says is like you're no longer useful or interesting to me and uh, who's there on the other side but Choco yeah. 
<laughs> Joseph's like, I don't even know if this qualify this feeling qualifies as interest, but I have a vague desire to kill you. Um, and uh, he's va- uh, Kenjaku's just like, where's Tengen? And <laughs> this is Joseph's just like that talking thumb doesn't want to see you. You sure are a <laughs> man. Um, and Kenjaku's like, well, you're merely the expendable front line, so don't be overzealous. The culling game has already served its purpose. Um, and he says, the customary play- prelude to merging Japanese non-soldiers has finished. And Chosa, right, you, the- you, you, you see roll ass character. Don't you dare <laughs> have have some type of say so in my ongoing. Exactly. Um, you are background father. Yeah. Uh, know your place, boy. <laughs> Uh, Where's my thumb friend? Where, <laughs> where is my thumb friend? Uh, so Choso's like, whoa, what's he talking about? Is it over? Are Yuji and the others all right? Uh, and uh, Kenjaku points out that uh, if he takes Tengen now, uh, they lose. Japan and maybe the whole world is done for. So he shows, he decides to show Choso one possible ending. Um, and he points out that Yuki Sukumo pointed out that optimizing cursed energy through Tengen means people become sorcerers. Uh, and he says that, uh, that f- according t- to him, that precedes uh, merger as mere verification via the culling game. So he doesn't, he, he says, he clarifies that he's like, I've, I do not seek to rid the world of cursed uh, spirits. And um, she su- he's surprised that she suspected consumption of populace as a cursed energy resource. I don't know what that means. Uh, <laughs> and he's um, so, you know, he's just happy that they think alike apparently. And um, he's, he's basically saying that he's always considered the possibilities of cursed spirits along with sorcerers. And uh, that this new form of cursed energy could be attained by raising cursed spirits to the next level. So basically, his overall plan is to merge Tengen with uh, non-sorcerers in Japan that could like result in million, hundreds of millions of people becoming cursed spirits with cursed energy and uh, possibly form this giant cursed spirit monster thing. Uh, and he just wants to see what that's like, you know. Um, he's just very curious and he's literally describes himself as feeling like a toddler holding a crayon and a blank sheet of paper. So, you know, he's just excited for that. And um, Choso's just like, well, what's in it for you? Why are you doing this? And uh, Kenjaku's like, well, it sounds like fun, but I won't know whether or not it is until it's done. What if the conglomeration of cursed energy looks like a funny face? Wouldn't that be hilarious? And uh, no warning. <laughs> The chapter ends with Choso uh, activating his piercing blood technique, uh, and that's where the chapter ends. Uh, wow. Uh, lots of fun. Uh, Josh, what did you think of Jujutsu Kaisen chapter 202? Uh, it was a, a slightly confusing chapter for me at first because of the uh, uh, the conversation in the beginning. I didn't understand the hostility towards Tenjin. But until she, until Yuki mentioned that she was a previous Star Plasma vessel, so she probably feels like she's was looked at as a tool or something that is beneath him. I mean, beneath it being Tenjin. Um, so I, I guess I slightly understand the uh, the hostility there. Um, but this conversation at the end with uh, Kenjaku and uh, the. Uh, I forget the, the the black blood kid. What's his name? The piercing blood. Choso. Choso, yeah. I like their conversation. Um, I I thought Kenjaku had a little bit more of a plan, or at least a more pointed like result of this. But you know, being that he's kind of been reduced to like uh to this thought that he's doing all of this just to see what'll happen. Kind of jokerish. Um, you know, I guess that makes him a little less interesting in my opinion. I want to know what you guys think about that, but otherwise I don't really have too many other thoughts. This is a cool chapter. Hmm. Brian, what did you think? About this? Oh, sorry. Oh, my bad. 
No, no, I just I said um, if, if they do fight next week, I hope uh, Choso doesn't get fucking wrecked. No, neither do I. <laughs> Pray your hands for that. Oh, I'll give him one of these, like the piercing blood. <laughs> um, Brian, what did you think? Choso's game murk next week. <laughs> Why'd you have to be so direct about it? Because he just is. You think he's going to beat Kenjaku? Well, he could survive. Maybe he'll lose, but he won't die. Negative. Characters die in this series. This isn't One Piece, okay? Right. This is the end of Choto. Hey, you know, people die in One Piece. I'd say it's an 80-20 split. There's an 80% chance pack. he dies, 20% he doesn't. Hmm. That feels fair. Those... Those are the odds. Sounds in, arbitra- in... arbitrary, but I'm with it. All right. Well, I, um... I'd, I'd bet money that he that he dies. I think the rest of this chapter, though, it was a lot of uh, explanation, and I did get lost in it because I've been trying to catch up on Hunter Hunter, <laughs> and that kind of war. I was like, oh shit, I gotta read again. <laughs> Yeah. I have to read more. <laughs> <laughs> and uh this does feel like after reading uh Hunter Hunter a bit more, this does this series feels like Hunter Hunter light. That's what I realized. It's uh it's Hunter Hunter with um I'd say a little bit more dynamic fights. Um but I don't know. After watch after reading a certain fight, I might even take that back Bro. because <laughs> Holy fuck. Know, anyway, wait, this is Hunter Hunter. Um but yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen, you know, it's it's uh it's doing a bunch of setup for the fun action centered pieces that are gonna come up soon. So um this is just a lot of explanation, a lot of uh exposition and a lot of setup. So I'm excited to see where he goes with where Gege goes with this. Because uh regardless, he's gonna fucking pop off. He rarely ever misses. So um we'll, we'll we'll see where it goes excited next week nice um yeah i really like this chapter um i think uh i mean honestly here and there i was a little confused i feel like the dialogue is a little too vague <laughs> and in, in a kind of annoying way because uh there's a lot of there's a lot of like stuff that we just don't know about tengen about like the star plasma stuff um i feel like uh you know I, I found myself kind of like scratching my head a little bit of between uh, Yuko and um, oh Yuki and, uh, and Tengen's conversation. Um, I wish he got a, a little more clarity on that, I guess. Uh, it kind of comes out of nowhere as well. So it's kind of, uh, it left me a little confused after two weeks of not having Jujutsu Kaisen. Uh, it's yeah. a bit of whiplash, to be honest, but um, not a bad thing overall. It's just maybe, uh, I worst it's a little nitpick, to be honest. Um, the stuff with Kenjaku is interesting because I feel like I, we have a little more clarity as to why he has been bringing people from the outside into Japan. I think it's just to help with merging with Tengen here um, with the uh, calling game as like a precursor. So, you know, he he's just trying to get as many uh, non-sorcerer uh, people into Japan as possible to merge them uh, with Tengen and like create a bunch of cursed spirits. And I feel like that's the overall purpose of, uh, the calling game in general. Uh, I don't know what, how they're going to counteract that. I don't know if they have to like kill the people coming in or not, uh, before it happens, but, uh, I'm interested to see where it's going next. Uh, luckily we have a year, a week before, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen comes out. I was about to say a year, but uh, before Jujutsu Kaisen comes out next, so we won't have to wait very long. Uh, but yeah, it's a lot of fun, and um, I'm I'm hoping Choso makes that out okay. I I uh, I'm being optimistic and saying that maybe he will, but you know, eighty twenty split, Chris. Hey, look, I'm not a, split. I'm not a naive little boy. All right, I just like to keep hope alive. <laughs> Let's see. You want to make it seventy thirty? You can do that. I don't want him. Uh, okay, ten percent more. Listen, Choso needs all he can get. He is fighting the main boss. Can, was all right, your it's mask back down. Always... It's back down to eighty twenty after that. <laughs> all right. 